For a start, we're going to talk about the old school. Now, this sequence of images here shows you the architecture of the old school. So in the first image, I'm the teacher at the front of the classroom and I'm looking out at the students who you can see have all got their heads down and they're, they're doing their work. When I turn around the other way and I look from the classroom, I can see that the teacher is sitting up on a little stage. And in a way, um, uh, that, that what we have in this classroom is a kind of information architecture, a communications architecture, a knowledge architecture. And what I want to do is kind of parse that architecture in order to talk about how these architectures in the near future could be quite dramatically different, and in fact, are becoming different uh, day by day as we use e-learning um, e um, uh, technologies and e-learning uh, ecologies is the word that we use, e-learning environments. Now, let me talk about our teacher for the second. The teacher is an expert. The teacher brings in content knowledge, content understanding. And one of the things about this classroom as a knowledge space, as an information space, as a communication space, is the teacher is one of the conduits from the outside world to the inside world. So one of the, the remarkable things about this classroom and any classroom, there's nothing in the world that can't be taught and can't be learned. There's nothing in the world that can't be spoken of. And what we do in these classrooms is a thing that Courtney Kasdan um, calls exophoric reference, that we're talking about the solar system, or we're talking about 18th century poets, or we're talking about some aspect of the world across all the subject areas, and those, uh, and, and that what the teacher brings into the classroom is a particular um, expertise and a particular knowledge and particular set of capacities to speak to those things. Now, as we move on to the next image, um, that it's not just the teacher that brings that knowledge into the classroom. What we also had with the creation of modern institutionalised education was an artefact called the textbook. And what the textbook did is the textbook summarised the world. So let's say uh, we're doing some work about the solar system. This is a chapter about the solar system. And of course, the solar system is outside. It's hard to see. Um, um, uh, you can't bring it into the classroom directly. But this book, by virtue of exophoric reference, can describe the solar system. So we have two conduits of knowledge into this space, two communicative forms. We have the teacher who speaks, and we have the textbook, uh, which, um, uh, which communicates in a written form. Now, um, what we have now in the, in the next image is we have a typical kind of knowledge move. The student is sitting there with their finger on the page of the textbook. And they're taking notes over here. And my rather facetious theory, but it's actually not so facetious, but it's facetious for a start, is that you have your finger on the page and it sort of comes up like this and you're writing notes and somehow or other as it comes through here, something gets remembered. Now, the, the not facetious part about this is a still prevalent definition of learning and education, including in e-learning environments, that learning is long-term memory. That's fundamentally what learning is about. So, as I say, what I'm trying to do here is parse the structure of this, uh, this particular learning environment. Now, going on to the next slide, um, I'm the teacher now in the classroom. Uh, we can see that all the seats are bolted to the ground. They're not designed for pupil-to-pupil -pupil interaction, and we can see this little girl in the, front, uh, in the front row here is looking up. So how do I interpret this as a teacher? Well, in fact, we don't know much about what's going on in this student's mind. They might be just looking up to think about something they've just read, to figure something out in their minds. They might be daydreaming, but actually something terrible happens in the next slide. The classroom was just not designed for this. And the other kids you see are trying to do their work, and this kid I, looks like she's disrupting them in their work. It wasn't designed for peer-to-peer -peer, um, peer -peer interaction uh, of this particular kind. So, uh, moving on now, this is um, to make some generalizations about this classroom, that what we necessarily have in this knowledge architecture, the knowledge architecture is the textbook and the knowledge of the teacher, and this communications architecture, which is the written words of the textbook and the teacher speaking, we, for a set of logistical reasons, we have two essential confinements, um, uh, in one in time and one in space. The time is, okay, we're doing 
science of weathering the planets, let's say, uh, between nine and 10 o'clock. Um, and we're in the same room together where we can hear the teacher speak and we can read the textbook together. Perhaps we can take the textbook home, which creates a little bit of a, a blurring of the edges of time and space, but essentially, for logistical reasons, this is the way the modern classroom worked.